My Lords, I welcome this important debate introduced by the noble Lord, Lord Truscott. Shale gas and its extraction by the process of hydraulic fracturing, known as fracking, remains a controversial subject. In discussing environmental benefits of shale gas, it is, of course, also important to address potential environmental risks from a science and engineering standpoint. These risks have been referred to by the noble Lord, Lord Truscott. I speak from my experience as Chairman of the Committee that produced the Royal Society and Royal Academy of Engineering report, Shale Gas Extraction in the UK, a Review of Hydraulic Fracturing. Our report was published in 2012. That independent review was requested by the Government Chief Scientific Advisor at that time, Sir John Beddington. It arose from experiences of seismicity in the Blackpool area in 2011, shortly after fracking of an exploratory shale gas well at the Priest Hall site. Our remit was to review the available scientific and engineering evidence associated with fracking, identify the major risks, and consider whether these can be managed effectively in the UK. There were two major questions that we were asked to address. A. What are the environmental risks, particularly in relation to possible groundwater contamination? B. What are the risks of earthquakes? In our review, we consulted with and received evidence from around 70 experts and organisations, including environmental organisations such as Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth and WWF. My Lords, our report concluded the following. Firstly, the fracking process itself is unlikely to contaminate groundwater. To reach overlying freshwater aquifers, the fractures in the shale would have to propagate upwards towards the surface for many hundreds of metres to reach them. The risk of this happening is very low, provided that fracking takes place at great depths. It is typically undertaken at depths of several kilometres. It's important not to conflate the fracking process with shale gas well operations. Groundwater contamination is much less likely to be due to the fracking process than to faulty well construction. The only realistic way that any contamination of groundwater may occur is if operations are poorly regulated and faulty wells are constructed as a result. Ensuring well integrity must remain the highest priority to prevent contamination. If wells are properly constructed, sealed and managed, the risk of contamination is very low. Our report therefore concluded that shale gas extraction can be undertaken safely in the UK, provided operational best practices are implemented and enforced through robust regulation. Secondly, our report concluded that earth tremors resulting from fracking are minimal, smaller than those caused by coal mining. In this context, earth tremor is a much more appropriate term than earthquake. The effects felt from earth tremors caused by fracking would be no worse than a passing heavy lorry. The noble Lord, Lord Truscott referred to earthquakes in Oklahoma. More significant earthquakes have been reported in the USA, all of these arising from re-injection of wastewater into disposal wells, not from fracking itself. We recommended various regulatory safeguards to manage these risks. A vital key to effective management of the risks is comprehensive and rigorous monitoring. In particular, methane and other contaminants in groundwater should be closely monitored as well as potential leakages of methane and other gases into the atmosphere. Similar conclusions on the importance of rigorous monitoring were reached by Public Health England in its 2014 report, and also in other recent reports by science and engineering academies within Europe and elsewhere, including the Australian and Canadian academies. Our Royal Society and Royal Academy of Engineering review made 10 major recommendations, all of which were accepted by the Government. The Task Force on Shale Gas, chaired by the Noble Lord, Lord Smith of Finsbury, also reached similar conclusions and made similar recommendations in its final report published in 2015. 
My Lords, we should nevertheless be careful to distinguish between exploratory activities and full-scale production. Shale gas extraction in the UK is presently at a very small scale, involving only exploratory drilling. There is greater uncertainty about the scale of production activities should a future shale gas industry develop nationwide. We will need to pay attention to the way in which risks scale up. Regulatory capacity will need to be increased. Efficient coordination of the numerous government bodies with regulatory responsibilities for shale gas extraction must be maintained. Our report covered environmental and health and safety risks, but climate risks were not addressed in detail. Fugitive methane emissions during shale gas extraction operations must also be closely monitored and minimised. Green completion technologies designed to capture any methane and other gases emitted from flowback water have been made mandatory in the USA by the Environmental Protection Agency since 2015. This may not be applicable to our current small-scale exploratory activities, but such technologies will certainly be needed for any future production activities in the UK. The potential economic and environmental benefits of shale gas development in the UK can only be properly evaluated by undertaking exploratory drilling and fracking. The type and composition of gas extracted and the proved reserves will vary depending on the detailed geology, and so each site has to be investigated on a case-by-case -case basis. Proved reserves means the volume that is economically recoverable. It is this that will really determine the potential economic benefits. This will only become clear when appropriate exploratory drilling has been completed. That is why it is so important for exploratory drilling to proceed without delay. My Lords, scare stories, myths, mistruths about fracking abound. Flames coming from water taps, damaging earthquakes, to name a few. Effective public engagement is essential to dispel such myths, to dispel such mistruths, thereby enabling shale gas extraction to gain wider acceptability we should recall that the UK has been employing fracking and directional drilling for non-shale resources for many years. Fracking itself is not new to the UK, but it is being newly applied to shale gas. The quantities of water needed are greater, but otherwise the process is very similar. As pointed out by the noble Lord, Lord Young, over the last 30 years, more than 2,000 onshore wells have been drilled in the UK around 200 of which have been fracked to, to enhance the recovery of oil and gas. In our Royal Society and Royal Academy of Engineering review, we were not aware of groundwater contamination issues with any of those wells. In summary, moratoria on shale gas extraction gets us nowhere. The constructive way forward is to proceed cautiously with well-controlled exploratory drilling with a strong regulatory framework, robust environmental risk assessments and rigorous monitoring regimes. As the noble Lord, Lord McGregor put it, we need to get on with it. Only this will provide the evidence needed to properly assess the economic and environmental benefits of shale gas development in the UK. Would you be prepared to say quite clearly that your society would strongly recommend the development of shale gas because of the huge economic benefits it could bring to this country, subject only to satisfactory safeguards in its production. I, I thank the Noble Law for that question. The answer is yes, uh, the Royal Society and the Royal Academy of Engineering would indeed say that we should proceed, uh, providing we proceed uh, exactly as I have been speaking about with, with uh, very careful and rigorous monitoring, yes.